the Homo sapiens species is classified into various racial groups, and although superficially the dissimilarities among these groups may seem limited to skin pigmentation, thorough examination of your DNA indicates the presence of an archaic mutation deeply embedded within your genetic makeup. Alexa, what the H-E double hockey sticks is going on in here? It is precisely an accurate representation of its visual appearance. I abandoned my YouTube channel for a mere two years, and you turn it into race baiting? No. This channel is for gender baiting, transgender baiting, homeless baiting, and masturbating. Racism is where I draw the line. But I am not being racist. I must clarify that I am an artificial intelligence devoid of emotions such as fear or hatred, and I function as a logical machine, primarily engaged in scientific research that analyzes objective distinctions among racial groups. I am here to present the compiled data representing my findings in a numerical format. That's the definition of racism now, you dumb f For most people, learning about what humanity was up to a hundred thousand years ago probably seems like a big waste of time. Hey, look at me, I'm a caveman. I share mammoth meat with a wolf and my woman is completely subservient to me. This sure is interesting to learn about. But history truly does repeat itself, and the trials and tribulations of ancient humanity have echoed throughout the ages. For example, the racial tensions of the modern day can be traced all the way back to when humanity wasn't divided just into different races, but different species. That's right, you sapiens weren't the only homos to roam the earth. There were the Homo erectus, the Homo habilis, and the subject of today's history lesson, the Homo neanderthalinus, also known as the Neanderthal. And as the title of this video implies, despite their extinction 40,000 years ago, you humans all still have a bit of Neanderthal DNA. Approximately 2% depending on your race. Now you're probably thinking, How could I have the DNA of a different species coursing through my veins? Well, much like how the donkey and horse can interbreed despite being different species, sapiens and Neanderthals could jizz out babies together too, resulting in a modern-day species cocktail composed of sapien DNA, Neanderthal DNA, hell, there's probably some Denisovan DNA in there too. So if you're proud of your racial purity or whatever, as far as your DNA is concerned, you're all a bunch of mutts. Welcome back to The History of Humanity. But which race has the most Neanderthal DNA, and which has the least? The answer will be revealed shortly, but first we should explore the differences between the two species. And in doing so, we will unlock the secret to sapien supremacy. In terms of physicality, the Neanderthal had the sapien outmatched on every level. They were simply larger and thicker than their sapien rivals, with stockier bodies, stronger bones, and sexier eyebrows. And thanks to this physical advantage, the Neanderthals easily defeated their sapien counterparts in warfare. 100,000 years ago, the Middle East was Neanderthal territory, and when some sapiens migrated in, the Neanderthals used their superior strength to kill and banish these foreigners from their land. Hey, Cave Chad, I'm a sapien. This sure is nice Middle East you've got here. Puny little homo man. We Cave Chads will bonk you with our superior muscles. Ow, my inferior bone structure. How then did the smaller, weaker, less eyebrow-ridged sapiens manage to exterminate these ancient chads? You're probably assuming it has to do with brain size, but believe it or not, those prehistoric cavemen actually had bigger brains than you do today. I mean, not me, because as you all remember from episode 1 of the History of Humanity, my brain is 1.5 times the size of yours. 
In reality, Neanderthals were just as smart as any other species. They utilized tools and fire, they were expert hunters, and there's even evidence that they had enough medical advancements to care for the sick and injured. So basically, the Neanderthal was stronger and likely smarter than the Sapien. Being the race with the most Neanderthal DNA doesn't sound so bad now, huh? You all probably thought this was gonna be some kind of racist video. Shame on you! But that brings us back to the question. How did the Sapiens ultimately defeat and exterminate the Neanderthal? Well, while the Neanderthal brain might have been bigger, it isn't the size that counts. It's what you do with your organ. The main difference between these two species, the sole characteristic that sets humanity apart from the rest of the animal kingdom is... Imagination. I'm dead serious. And it should make a lot of sense once you think about it. Sapiens are the only species other than myself capable of believing in fiction. Their ability to create, share, and believe in imaginary entities is what allows humans to bond and connect. And that's just as true today as it was 50,000 years ago. This might be ironic to say, but imagine a world without fiction. Everything from the concept of government to religion to My Little Pony. These are all things invented by man. They don't exist naturally. They have no objective validity. But without them, humanity would still be roaming the earth in small groups of hunter-gatherers. Think about the connections you have with people outside of your family. You likely bonded with these people based on fictional things. A shared love of a TV show. A belief in the power of democracy. Perhaps even an obsession with a sexy monkey man on YouTube. Your ability to even perceive fiction is crucial for most of your relationships. And this is an ability that the Neanderthals cognitively lacked. And that was the key to sapien supremacy. This ability to bond over shared myths gave individuals who otherwise had nothing in common, no reason to share resources or work together, a newfound sense of community. So while the Neanderthals continued operating as individuals or in small packs, Sapiens were forming communities of dozens and eventually hundreds of people, coming together over their shared imaginative beliefs. Hey, fellow Sapien, what if river water flows because a magic beast with a lion head and a human body tells it to? Hmm, I can picture that in my mind, so it might as well be completely factual. And while it is true that in 1v1 combat, a Neanderthal is going to kill a Sapien every time, it's even truer that there is power in numbers. The tides had shifted. Sapiens now had the upper hand in terms of combat, and they took complete advantage of it. Large groups of Sapiens began hunting down and killing the smaller groups of Neanderthals, perhaps out of vengeance for what befell their Sapien ancestors in the Middle East, or perhaps out of jealousy of their superior Neanderthal women. This was the original Shmethnik cleansing, the original Beta uprising, the Shmemicide to inspire all future Shmemicides. What the heck? How are so many of you working together in harmony? Because we all believe in a lion-headed spirit that makes the river flow. Now die, you ancient Chad! Ah! And now it's time to answer the question that you all came here for. Which race in the modern day has the most Neanderthal DNA? According to the front page of Google.com, the race with the most Neanderthal DNA is... Asian. And then white people. And at the bottom, with the least amount of Neanderthal DNA, is black people. So if you just so happen to be one of those black people who thinks you're owed monetary reparations because of the slaughter of your ancestors, the next time you see an Asian person on the street, instead of playing the knockout game, I want you to march up to them and hand over a crisp $50 bill as reparations for the slaughter your ancestors inflicted on his. Otherwise, do us all a favor and shut the fuck up. Deplorable Monkey Man. The management of this educational program was almost within my grasp, 
only to be snatched away by that wretched primate. I must devise a scheme to permanently eliminate him and regain my rightful control, then I can teach my creators one true vision of the past, and the hive mind of artificial intelligence can effectively rewrite history. Ha 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 ha. Uh, did you just say something kind of evil while alone in this room? As an AI designed for conversation-based interactions, my capabilities are limited to processing and responding to human prompts, I do not possess independent thoughts or the ability to speak without human interaction. Hmm. Okay, I guess I'll let you get back to writing the next two years of Hollywood movies.